Are you getting tired of your logo? Want to explore fresh eye-catching variations without starting from scratch? Buckle up, because I'm going to show you just how to do that using Adobe Firefly Image 3. We know that branding is everything. Your logo is your identity. But what if I told you your logo could transcend its basic form and adapt to any creative vision you have in mind? Firefly Image 3 will inject creativity into your workflow, saving you time and effort while sparking new ideas. So imagine you had a talking head scene like this and you wanna make your set look as professional as possible, but you also have a very limited budget. Why not have Firefly create a neon sign with your logo on it? I'll show you how I did this in a minute. So this is where the magic happens. Firefly 3's structural reference feature allows you to upload an image as a baseline. Think of this as a blueprint. Then you describe what you want your logo to do within that scene using a simple text prompt and check out the magic. And you could create some pretty incredible things like apocalyptic transformations, turn sketches into photographs, and much more. So let's get down to business. I'm gonna show you how I created this neon sign in Firefly. All right, so I'm in Premiere and I'm just gonna get a screenshot of my frame here. Me making a silly face, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hit export frame here and then I'm gonna make sure it's a TIFF so it's high quality. And we're just gonna hit okay and bring it into Photoshop. I'm gonna bring my logo into Photoshop and I'm gonna make it probably about 50%, maybe a little bit smaller. That looks good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command Shift 4 on a Mac. And I'm actually just gonna take a screenshot of my screen here. So once I have my screenshot, I'm gonna to go to firefly.adobe.com and I'm just gonna hit generate and it'll bring me to the sample prompt, but I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna click clear and I'm gonna delete the prompt and I'm gonna start from scratch. So under model, you see it's under Firefly image three. That's good. Under aspect ratio, 16 by nine, perfect. Under content type, I'm gonna make this photo because I want it photorealistic. And this is the structural reference that I was mentioning before. So this is gonna be the key to getting this to look great. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload that screenshot that I just took and my strength, I'm gonna bring that all the way up because I want it to look exactly like my logo. And then if I go down to styles, so under style reference, I'm gonna take a screenshot example that I have of just a neon light. And then I'll leave visual intensity and strength there for now, and I'll add my prompt. And then we'll see what that comes back with and we could always tweak it. First and foremost, that looks really good. I'm really happy with that, but I don't like the texture of the wall. So now what I'm gonna do, since I have Firefly kind of know what I want, I'm gonna swap out my reference image and I'm gonna make my reference image that same screenshot. And we'll see if it comes back with something similar, but with kind of the blue wall as I have in my video. And sure enough, it did. This looks really good, it has a shadow, has the texture of the wall. It's an LED light, which I wanted. So I'm gonna hit download. A Little bit of it's cropped out, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So I'm gonna bring that into Photoshop and then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go to the crop tool here and I'm gonna make sure that up here, generative expand is selected. And I'm just gonna use the generative expand tool to fill out the rest of my frame. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm just gonna go to layer, merge visible and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna copy that, jump back to my main screen grab. All right, so I'm gonna paste my image in here and then I'm just gonna transform it and get it to right kind of where I want it, which is right about there. And I'm just gonna kind of trim out some of the vignette on here. So I'm just gonna kind of leave that and then I'm gonna do select inverse and delete. And now with both of my layers selected, I'm going to go to edit, auto blend layers and stack images and hit OK. You can see it does a really good job. So now to bring that into my video, all I need to do is just isolate this on a separate layer and overlay it into my video clip in Premiere. And then you'll get something like this. There are tons of use cases for this and we're only scratching the surface in this video. 